so just hearing how you transitioned into Christian hip hop and knowing that your, your influences and your circle, your peers are still there, that they kind of look at you like, yo, you wildin', like what you mean you ain't talking about the same stuff we talking about? Or, you know, why you doing that corny rap? How did they, they respond? Well, yeah, but I think, I think people already knew this is something. Everybody know me as Pop. Okay. And I think for them, some people it was shocking, but it wasn't really shocking. Um, I that's something Pop would do. Like I could see that for Pop. Mm -hmm. He always been trying to talk. Like I always been, I always had a positive outlook on a lot of things in life. Okay. I was always the guy that's like, you just gotta be like, yo, bro, shut up. Like, bro, not now. <laughs> <laughs> We about to go do this. Not okay. now, bro. Like I got you. So that always been me. Um, but I say this. And every believer, it don't always happen like some big old thing happens mm. when it's just so impactful and God came and just kaboomed. God can do that, but it don't happen like that with everybody. And I think for a lot of people, though, when that event takes place in your life, Mm. It's for the most part it is a it's it's big because you got it. Christ now. I think it's hard for people to not see that. Mm -hmm. And I think everything after that becomes easy because it's like I don't know, man. For me, the hardest part was God revealing to me I'm a rap for Him and not knowing how. Because you got to mm. die to yourself. Amen. So if God tell yeah. you to do something, you worrying about, like you said, like how people going to look at you and all of that. But I never really cared about that because I'm that's, really about the facts. That's key. And I feel like I'm me. Like, just that's what it is. Like, and if I'm me, who you think he is? Mm. Like, so for me... I got more crazy looks when I when God revealed himself to me and cuz mind you when when he first revealed himself to me I wasn't rapping for God. I okay. still was rapping for the world. Okay. Um but that event was more crazier than me just rapping for God. So I think it wasn't a strange thing to people. It was more crazier for people to see me go through what I went through and just started Jesus Jesus and all of this, but when I started to rap for God, it was just like confirmation for them, like, mm. you know. It was like the build up. Yeah, okay. it, it wasn't crazy, but the hard, like I said, the hardest part for me was, all right, God, you want me to rap and say Jesus Christ and all of these things, and basically, don't rap your feelings, you gonna rap my word. That's another thing, he had to sit me down and I couldn't touch a microphone. I had to just read his word and study him. Because, yeah, you could tell people your testimony. You could you could speak how you want to speak. But when you actually an agent, like, yeah, you can be a citizen of the kingdom. But then from citizenship is agentship. Meaning you now working for the Lord. And everybody who's a soldier instilled, there's credentials. And there's a way that you ought to work. You can't just, that's any job. Right. You're not going to just go there with no credentials and not know what your job entails. And this is the manual book for how you are going to inform the new employees. Mm. You don't just bring them in and say, yo, bro, you do this, sweep that, yeah, you'll be good to go. Like, no, this is why we do this. This is how this goes. This is how that goes. When you might be talking to a new believer, yeah, a lot of spirit to lead you, but you got to know why. Who is the gospel about? What is the gospel? All of these things matter because you need to tell people and reveal to them who I am the way I intend to be revealed. Mm -hmm. Don't give them a God that you just made up in your mind who seems like God to you. You could give them your relationship and your, your personal outlook on God after you allow them to see who I truly am by my word. So I just didn't understand how that was going to look. Mm. I remember sitting down going through all the Christian hip-hop one night. 
I'm like, I want to see. Is there anybody that, that... Mind you, I ain't start rapping for God. I didn't know there was a Christian hip-hop. Okay. Of course, it's common sense to know, though, there's going to be people in the world that raps about God. Okay. I didn't know it was a thing, though. Mm -hmm. I just thought it's just rap. They ra This is a topic they rap about God. Like, mm -hmm. that's how I saw it. Yeah. Kirk Franklin is the most I knew. And I'm like, God, I, I really pray. I'm not going to say what I'm not going to do, mm -hmm. but I really hope and pray that ain't what you're calling me to do. Mind you, there's nothing wrong with Kirk Franklin music. That just hot. It wasn't authentic to me. There you go. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, God is, yeah, that's God. But that music wasn't authentic to me. I just, I didn't enjoy it. So. Kind of like David and Saul, you know. And which way? The armor that Saul was trying to give David, it wasn't fit for David to go to battle with. I feel you. Yeah, like, yeah, like, it just, it wasn't me, bro. Mm -hmm. So. One night, I'm like, let me see if there's other people that rap about God. So I start putting in like Jesus rap or like Christian rap. Or mm. I seen a lot of stuff and I'm like, all right, still not intriguing me. Came across Dayton. Mm. Like, all right, he got something there. <laughs> it wasn't until I seen, uh, yeah, Dayton definitely caught my auto, caught my ear. Shout out to Dayton. Facts. But it wasn't until I saw and heard Eshawn Burgundy's mm. Testify record. Hey, nighttime, I see diamonds in the sky. Mm. Daytime, I see sunlight shining bright. Like, when I heard that, I said, oh, yeah. Connected, right? Sound like an alchemist beat. Like, mm. oh, yeah, this is what I do. Okay. And then uh, that's what put the battery in my back. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to Eshawn. Burgundy, yeah. man. Shout out. I told Shout Eshawn to one time on, uh, on Clubhouse, too, a minute back. But that's what caught my, that's what, what really did it for me. Okay. And I was like, oh, yeah, I'm locked in. Mm. And from there, everything was history. So now that you're on this side of Christian rap, you on less like you said, we ain't gonna say the other side, but now that you you're doing music for the Lord. Yeah. Was there ever a time where you felt like, nah, I can't do this? Like you wanted to walk away from the music aspect of it? Nah. Okay. And I understand sometimes people feel that way, but for me, it's never a business. Mm -hmm. It's just my father's business. Mm. I Talk never I it. never you gotta understand, man. I hear, and that's a good question you ask. There's a lot of people that says stuff like, yo, these guys only came over here to rap about God because they didn't make it in the world. Mm -hmm. It was different for me. Okay. I had music videos on MTV Jams, uh, BET Jams. Uh, you know, I'm around all the celebrities. Uh, like I'm locked in. And at a pivotal time, too, where, yeah, the music scene is popping in Atlanta, but you still had to come to New York. You still had to do the Sirius Satellite Radio. You still had to run to these different offices. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, Diddy had the, uh, his studio uh, they used to throw events at. Uh, uh, you just had everything. You had to come to New York. Okay. And everybody that was important for me to know or you to know as an artist, I was locked in with. Mm -hmm. There wasn't, like, there wasn't nobody that, like I said, that wasn't a problem for me. If anything, it was hard to let that go in a sense. If God tell me that I'm going, but mm -hmm. it was hard to let that go because it, it was so promising. And it's like, you right there, you going, how you, how you drop the ball now? To, you about to go, Ooh, you turned in a mace? That's how it seemed at the yeah. time. So for me... Rapping for the Lord was only a plus. Mm. It was like either you going to do it or not. I couldn't half step it because of where I was at. So it's like I don't never get to a point. I, like there's a lot of guys that I meet that do the music for the Lord and I get it. Everybody got their journey. There's no stones being casted. Right. But I don't look at this as a business or yeah, we all want to be recognized for our pen, but I'm truly having fun. 
Okay. I'm truly just doing gladly what the Lord called me to do. One of the things he called me to do. Okay. Music is 10% of any ministry, I think. Like, when I say that, I'm saying we don't have to do music. You could just go tell somebody about the Lord. Music is just a plus. You mm -hmm. don't have to do music. This is something God allowed us to do. It's an additive, but mm -hmm. it's just music. Okay. It's the Lord that matters. With, like, what you're talking about matters, but it's just music. So I don't never approach it that way because I feel like I'm in my checking. Check I'm in my second childhood when it comes to it. What I mean is, on that side, when I was rapping for the world, I did that. Mm -hmm. Only thing I ain't do is sign a major deal, which is a loan at the end of the day. You still got to recoup. Only thing I ain't do is sign a major deal mm -hmm. and, and sell millions of records. But as far as like, I done been around D-Block. Uh, 50 brought everybody to Governor's Island. Mm -hmm. Went out there with guns. He tore the stage down. Uh, shout out my man, Nino Calvin. We started from the ground up rapping. Mm -hmm. He running with Birdman and them. Like, he been from the Sandlot running with Bird and them. But I done been on the tour buses with Birdman. I done the whole shebang from the East Coast to the South. Like, however you want to put it. Like, my vision is, is truly on the Lord. Mm. I'm not doing this to be signed. I'm not doing this. We need to get the newest hit record. This is what the kids are listening to when it comes to Christian hip hop. Like my music is real raw. That's just what I. This how I'm giving it. So for me, it never got that serious. But now I will say, it becomes difficult because when God calls you to a, a stage like that, mm. you're no longer. You're a, a true slave for the Lord. You can't do what you want to do. Okay. Now, if the question was sometimes, do you feel like walking with the Lord, that sometimes, no, I never want to forsake the Lord. Okay. But there's a lot of times where my flesh wants me to give up, not mm. give up believing. Right. But just give up. Bearing that cross. I don't, like, yeah. Mm-hmm. It's heavy. And, right. Mm. So when you rapping for the Lord, I feel like when you truly love the Lord, I'm envious and jealous, not jealous, but I'm envious sometimes of people who walk with the Lord but are not on a big platform for people to keep reminding them and keep them under a microscope. Because these people get to make certain mistakes probably and repent that I can't think twice about making mm. because it's bigger than me. It's not just me, the Lord, in my closet, in my Bible. Right. It's me, the Lord my closet but then it's a platform and then it's this and you got all the sheep watching and it ain't just about oh you you sin so repent but you sinned in a in all of these sheep just seen you they think mm. it's cool or you just make god look crazy in front of the world and it's because of that why people look and say yeah that's why i would never believe in god look what he's doing we ain't no different which mm. we are no different the difference is i believe in jesus and my coat has his name on it. So that's the only reason that will put me in a higher place than somebody else. Right, right. It ain't what I do, but still, man, that, that's what I could say about doing music for the Lord. You're really held accountable to another level. You can't just do what you want to do. You don't know who's watching. And I think that's a good thing, too. That's a great thing. That's a good thing because... It's a great thing. For your flesh, it's, it's yeah. just... It's humbling. Yeah. Because it's like, dag, bro. Sometimes this becomes a lot. I'm only human. Mm -hmm. And that's for everybody. Your family knows you, doesn't, you do music for God. Mm -hmm. Your friends know. So now when you're around your friends and you want to just forget about everything and just relax and chill, ah, uh, you got to be wise. A wise man wins souls. Mm. You have to be wise. And speaking on that note, when you're talking about the, the entertainment industry and holding yourself accountable, holding yourself to a certain standard, yeah. that, that makes me think about the, the, the current conversation of you know, hip hop being entertainment and 
artists not being held to that same standard, music executives not being held to the same standard, meaning the content they put out. What do you think about that conversation when people say it's just entertainment? So when I rap in the world, or for the world rather, I ain't really care. I'm gonna be honest with you. And the reason why I don't care is because they doing what they do, and a lot of times that's what they know. Mm. Life is, is a lot of hypocrisy in it, but how much more hypocrisy when you don't have the Lord in, in, in your life? Or when you're not doing it for the Lord. There and when go. I say there hypocrisy is because a lot of things in life contradict. Like, and what I mean, we try every day to die to ourselves, but us ourselves, we're not perfect. We still fight this thing called flesh. So a lot of things will contradict. God's standard is the standard even when you don't look like you live in the standard or you're not in the position right now living the standard. His standard is still the standard. So I think a fellow believer can understand that. Hmm. But I wouldn't hold. It's deep, man. I just think the Bible says it's the love of God that brings people to repentance not the wrath of God. In the same instance where it say, do you tell people, you who tell people not to steal, do you steal? You who tell people not to lie, do you lie? Mm -hmm. Well, it's people like you that make people blaspheme the name of God. Okay. So I'm not, the Bible also says a, a good soldier doesn't worry about the affairs of civilians. Okay. He's worried about pleasing the one who enlisted him as a soldier. Mm. I think, like the Bible, yo, bro, stumbling blocks, it's a must they come. But woe unto those who they come by. And it's like, in order to not be around sin, because at the end of the day, it's a sin issue, mm -hmm. you have to leave the world. So I'm not about empowering the black man or empowering uh, my community and I'm not about none of that I'm about Jesus Christ Amen Yeshua Hamashiach if you Greek Iesus like I'm not about nothing else because nothing else will work no solution will work to cure this thing that we got called sin you could get a, you could get rid of every racist person in the world you still got to deal with sin in another way. You still mm -hmm. got to deal with the devil and demons and other things. It might not be racism. It might be lust. It might be hatred. It might anything. Like, so I, I'm not looking to hold somebody accountable that never even proclaimed the name of Jesus Christ. I want to really sit down, chop it up. Let's talk about Christ. Let's have a cool convo. And I see where you at. Far too much times with social media... You got people feeling like they could do to people that somebody who's discipling somebody does. And you don't truly know a person. You don't, you know, yeah, call out what needs to be called out. But that's for the body. That ain't mm. for nobody on the outside. I get it. I get How it. How you do that? Mm. I'm not in the business of that. It's, and again, everybody is called to different areas. But for me... There's no sense in me going back or going to a neighborhood telling people why they should stop doing certain things or do things a better way if I'm just not going to tell you how to plug your soul into the one who gives life and then he going to take the will from there. And then, yeah, we could disciple you and we could, because every day is a battle for me too. Mm -hmm. But I'd be crazy to come and be like, yo, bro, yo, stop rolling that weed up, B. Yo, you need to chill, yo. I get it. But then now what? Mm -hmm. I stopped. Now what? Okay. So I'm really more just into giving Jesus. And we figure it out. But I can't hold you accountable to something you ain't even professing. God will judge those outside. Mm. Our, like, when it comes to that, we're called to holding each other accountable. Yo, my man, you believe in Christ? Yeah, you bugging. I don't think you should do that. Mm. They, yeah. Why? You know they watching, right? You know the devil, he, you know he gonna go accuse you, right? 
You know they gonna look for any little thing to say why God ain't real, right? Mm. You might wanna fall back. That's how I see it. Okay. That's heavy. That's heavy. Okay. Yeah. Hip hop gonna be hip hop. Forever it was what it was, man. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It started out as a voice for the people, but you gotta ask yourself, what people? I'm not into empowering people. I'm into being weak so God could be mighty. Okay. Good feedback. Love it, love it, love it. We're dropping gems on y'all. So let's talk about the music. No Respect of Person Project. Yes, sir. Out now. Go stream. Check Shout. the video. Shout. Um, what was your creative approach? Like, what was your overall goal with that project? Man, I do all kind of music as far as like sound wise. I'm okay. very versatile. But people hate, I ain't gonna say they hate, but people, they, I think the people who truly have a love for my music like when I rap. Mm. They don't want to hear me doing no melodies of auto-tune. They don't want to really hear me do nothing Southern. And when I say Southern, I just mean a Southern sound. Or, okay. You know, not necessarily just... I went from Jada Kiss to Gucci Man, but just switching it up, which I will always switch it up. Mm -hmm. But for this one... I wanted to really give them something that was just raw. Mm. Okay. It's no respect of persons. Mm. Like, God is not a respect of persons, neither should you be. Okay. You don't tell the man who dressed and decked out in Gucci and Louis, yo, sit up here, and tell the man who dripped out in FUBU, sit back there. You know what I mean? You look at a man by his fruits, mm. and you go from there. So... This project was just truly about giving them the raw mm. and really keeping it right. Like my, my big brother Reef, he always tell me that, like, shout out to Reef, man. He always be like, yo, Kata, you got to give them them bars. And I see it reflect in the numbers, too. And again, I'm not about the numbers, but I think the numbers point to... I guess what people paying attention to more and I still drop like I just did the uh, the Dirk and J. Cole joint over all my life mm -hmm. um, I'm gonna forever do what I feel I'm led to do Okay, I'm not numbers driven but there's a reason why people really enjoy when I do that sometimes you gotta listen to that so I just wanted to give them a project that they could enjoy, I could enjoy, and it feels like home. Mm, okay. So that's how that came about. I'm producing now, so I did a, I, I did some beats on there. Mm. My man Trox, shout out to Trox. He did some joints on there. So it was dope, man. I got Dayton on there. I got C4 Cortona. Mm, heavy. You would have thought I was sign of the Menace Movement. <laughs> shout out my brothers. Heavy. Um, I got my wife on there. Dope. That was really it, man. So, yeah, no respect of persons. It's out. Crazy, too, man. So, let's let's just kind of wrap up here with talking about where do we see Will Cater five years from now? Well, so five years before now, I had a song named Ruby. And I said, I have kids in five years. That's my girl decision. Hopefully, we be married and have a girl with rhythm or a son who denim, never sagging like his dad's was and be a victim mm. to the worldly mind state and have to reposition. Um, that's what I said five years ago. Literally, my son came five years, even the same month from when I dropped the record. Five years later, my son came. Okay. Um, so I want to be real careful about what mm. I say. <laughs> oh. But in five years, man. Talk about it. I just plan on being in a place. I'm learning uh, the stock market now too. Okay. I want to have a lot of a lot of music out. I want to. Uh, I just want to help people. I want to be in a position where 
I don't just got to pray for somebody, but I can also be the answer. In a sense of like when it says if you got a brother in need, don't just say I'm going to pray for you and send him away if you have it to give. If you have There's nothing it wrong give. with praying for somebody, but I'm trying to be wealthy enough to help people, whoever mm. it may be, and give God the glory. Because I'm not going to lie. It's something about giving mm. to people. It's not about giving. But when you could tell them who it came from, I think that's the best part. To see the twinkle in their eye light up, even unbelievers. Mm. Just that when you say, yo, Jesus did that, man, you'll be surprised how much people just said a prayer. Mm. Five minutes for you pulled up and gave them that $10 or you gave them this meal. Mm -hmm. Don't listen. You're a man of God, you believe. I think giving is, is great, but the greater aspect in part is when you tell them who it came from. That's dope. 